episode 23 i'm your host kev and joining me today is my regular co-host dave hello hello uh jeff yar and special guest kirsty hey hi there you okay yeah i'm not bad (laughs) good good um so what are you doing here kirsty why are you on our show uh because you asked me to come and talk to you uh (laughs) (laughs) Um, but no, other than that, it's to uh, talk mostly about Tibber's workshop, uh, Tibber's Clay, depending on which one platform you're looking at. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks. For, yeah, we'll get we'll get more into that after we get through the uh, the due diligence and the news. So thanks for joining us anyway. Um, so yeah, before we get started, we're going to talk about what we've been doing this week. Uh, Dave, do you want to start us off and tell us what games you've been playing this week? Why, certainly. Um, just, I'm going to start with last night, just because I got a new game, so it's exciting. But I just picked up uh, ARMS for the Nintendo Switch, and I've been playing that a little bit last night, and it is pretty fun. Yeah, it, look, it looks alright. I just, I don't know if it's worth 50 quid. <laughs> um... It depends on how you feel about any fighting games being worth full price. <laughs> I, I think it's about as good as any other fighting game out there, and I think it would do if 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 it's okay to price fighting games at full price. I would say it's okay to price arms at full price. Interesting. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean it looks good, and it must be good to have something else on the Switch to play. Because I mean, as I said last night, really all the Switch has had so far is like ports and third-party releases. I mean, this is the first big original Nintendo game, isn't it, on the Switch? Well, it depends on what your views of Breath of the Wild are. <laughs> yeah. Well, Breath of the Wild is a, argument view, is a Wii U game that was Switch ported game. at the last minute, so... Well, it wasn't really ported at the last minute. It was development was shifted to Switch, and then they kind of backported that back, but one of the reasons okay. it has no gamepad or anything like that is because you know, lead development was moved to Switch near the end. That's true. Yeah, they are feature identical. Okay. So yeah, so so that, wasn't that, that just you know Meg argument. finished for Wii U and ported <laughs> over. It was development shifted and then sort of backported, but prim- primary development was on Wii. So it's it's kind of weird. We'll mix of both. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Dave? Um, I I've still been on kind of like an Assassin's Creed binge. Um, I I picked nice. up Unity again for like two bucks. I've been playing some of that and still playing uh, Syndicate and trying to hundred percent it. But other than that. That's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, all right then. Uh, myself, uh, I've played a bit of a mix this week. Uh, last weekend, me and Jeff finally got back to Portal 2, where we carried on with our cooperative campaign, which was fun. Um, Super fun. <laughs> Such a good game. Yeah, it's, oh, oh, yeah, it's a classic. Dave hasn't played it properly. I bought it him like three months ago, and he played like the first hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. Keep playing, Dave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to get to the ending. Yeah, you need to. Uh, I've been, I played a little bit of the culling, but um, well, I got through the tutorial, but then it wouldn't let me connect to servers outside of the UK. And like, you know, I was playing with Clay, who's in America, so I just gave up. Um, we've had, just thrown it out there. We've had trouble connecting in the UK. Me and my partner, who's in Wales, can't can't connect to a game. It takes fifteen minutes. Oh jeez! All oh, right. Well, wow. see, the the problem I've got is the the Xbox version. They specifically removed international connectivity because it's the preview build. But you're oh. saying on the on the PC version as well, there's been a lot of problems. Yeah, definitely. I tried to play it recently, and it's just not having any of it. Mm, mm. That's too bad. Uh, it's a but shame. It's early on. They're they're probably just trying to figure out. Yeah. Okay. The network. Um, also, I've been playing a, a very brief play on the Disney Afternoon Collection, which I just got this week. Ooh. 
which is you know good fun uh, classic yeah, yeah. Uh, really oh, there's a couple I haven't played on there before so I look forward to uh, I'm playing them in order but you know I look forward to getting to like DuckTales 2 I never never played that I don't know if you did I never have nope okay. uh, I was all about DuckTales 1 for Game Boy okay <laughs> nice uh, Rocket League, as usual, yeah, a couple of games on Rocket League every every few nights, uh, and Magikarp Jump, the greatest game in the history of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I finished all the main leagues, and I've actually hit the total level cap, which uh, says a lot about how empty my life Good is. Lord. I suppose. <laughs> Uh, and something like that yeah but i'm still loving it and i can keep playing and getting more and more rewards which do nothing ultimately because i've already finished everything so uh just another one just another time sink uh <laughs> what about you then jeff what have you been playing all right so uh also like you said the culling um i played with clay last weekend a little bit it's okay i didn't love it didn't hate it but it it felt a little rough around the edges, which makes sense. Um, Portal 2, like you mentioned, co-op. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I won Forza Horizon 3 from Mixer just for watching the Microsoft stream last week. So I've been playing that a bit. Uh, Rocket League, kind of my weekly ritual. And then uh, some Viva Pinata. Just, I'm not really sure why. I just decided to fire it up one night. It's addictive, isn't it? Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> yeah, played around. I have like a water-based garden going right now and i had i don't remember what the hippopotamuses are called but i just got one of those and it was pretty sweet um <laughs> then <laughs> last night played sea of thieves stayed up till like 1 a.m which is kind of why i was so tired this morning so sorry about that and then uh <laughs> mobile i've been playing the family guy another freaking mobile game which is just a rip off of every other match three game there is <laughs> but with family guy characters so i like it <laughs> I, I'm glad you're so into Match 3. I love Match 3 games. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing them since like MSN Messenger in like 1999. And you could like oh, yeah, you're, you're the OG. Com- competitive Bejeweled, yeah. Oh, it, was, it was all about a competitive solitaire showdown for me. Mm, that was also a classic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that pretty much does it for me. Okay, alright then. Uh, so Kirsty, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I've been playing some League of Legends. I don't know why. It's the saltiest game I've ever played in my entire I've life. Never played that. It's don't trust me. <laughs> just just run away. Because once you okay. start, that's it. Like you're stuck in. That. Game over. Oh, yeah. the community is just dreadful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh dear. That's what I'm. I, I'm. I'm like scared to even try it because I, I just hear so many horror stories about everyone yeah. just being cussed out online and everything. It's 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 bad. Um, I tend to just offer people cups of tea. Like I, I know you really act. You want me to go put the kettle on for you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, been playing Stardew Valley again. I think I've put like hundred hours so into good. that game. It's it's bloody brilliant. Like there's so much mm-hmm. content for just a, a farming game. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but I'd I'd really recommend playing it if you haven't played it already yeah i haven't yet like when i first heard about it, it's like oh so it's indie harvest food you know that can't be too interesting and then like the more i see of it the more this looks like this looks more like a full life simulator in 16 yeah. bits yes it is <laughs> wow uh there's so much communication you can have with people and there's mining areas and all sorts it's great um i've also played rimworld which again is good very very hard good nonetheless i got killed by beavers beavers came <laughs> into the area and and ate my any people. game where you can be killed by beavers sounds like a winner <laughs> <laughs> um friday the 13th we've played a lot of since that's been released as a group nice my god it's brilliant if you get a good group together to play it you can also it, it's very easy to play with people from different areas like we play with a lot of the americans and stuff with that one um and having your friends just appear behind you with monologues of how they're going to kill you is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's got a good atmosphere. Uh, still a bit clunky in places, but yeah, it's much better than Dead by Daylight. And mobile-wise, I've played a lot of Soul Knight, which is like a little um, 8-bit dungeon game. Mm, you get a little okay. cat follow you around. It's also quite fun and free to play, so 
recommend that one. And that's that's all I've done, really, this week. I'm disappointed awesome. that none of you have been playing Magic Carp Jump. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, that's, that's I can't your bring thing. myself can't to try it. You call yourself gamers. <laughs> <laughs> all right then okay well thanks for that guys uh i think it's time we moved on to the news <laughs> so uh yeah just a couple of points this week we don't want to go on too much because obviously we've got a guest on and we don't want to you know bulk up the episode too much but uh i was wondering uh jeff you're quite good at talking about stuff uh <laughs> Do you want to give a quick sort of brief roundup of E3? Like maybe there's been something since the Microsoft conference that we haven't spoke about or? Oh man. Okay. I'll do my best. Uh, let's see. Most of what I can tell you is going to be about Rare. So sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, so throughout the week, Rare did a series of interviews and a couple different panels. Um, but to kind of just briefly round up the week, um, I think the big highlight was that the show floor was connected to the technical alpha and players could compete in that. Um, they also did a contest involving some riddles that were on the forums. So um, the first person to find those in game, they were a lot harder than the ones in the game that were kind of shown in the trailer. Um, I guess was going to win some real world pirate swag from Rare. So it's pretty cool. Um, show wise trying to remember what all happened this week pretty much i mean just in regards to rare they, they were demoing the show in the microsoft booth um there were some reports that the line wasn't as long as last year because of how the booth was set up so unfortunately you didn't get those long wrapping queues of four hours you got this little like 30 minute queue that was just restrictive as heck that security guards wouldn't let people in and it was kind of a pain so unfortunately they didn't quite get that wow factor as they did last year which you know it's okay it might be easier not to have to deal with that um fire marshal wise and all that so um games outside of what we talked about i i'm just trying to think of what we didn't talk about in the show last week and there's not really a lot announced during the week um i can go into the community panel unless we want to Save that as a separate news piece. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I think it all links in. So. Yeah, no, okay. Jeff. All right. In that regard, then, okay, so there was on Monday, there was actually a PC Gamer panel, and Ted Timmons, the PC design lead from Sea of Thieves, uh, spoke briefly on that. It was just like five or six minutes, really, discussing kind of what their approach to bringing it to PC is and how it's a little bit different. It was mostly stuff we had heard in their their youtube videos their podcast so um not any big juicy details per se but it was still great to see it represented and and shown off to the pc community a little bit more than it had been i think publicly before this it had just been demoed on xbox at like gamescom and e3 so that was kind of cool uh and then the in my opinion kind of the big thing and kind of the the most newsworthy was the community panel on wednesday part of the e3 coliseum event and in that, there was uh, Joe Neat, the executive producer, Mike Chapman, the lead designer, uh, now design director, uh, Christina Parker, who we've mentioned on the show before. She's the live campaign producer, so she's in charge of the kind of community uh, after events, after the, the game is launched, that are external. Um, and then Adam Park is another producer on the project. So the four of them were there, and they discussed a little bit about how community centric the game has been just from kind of the get go and why they had even, you know, like the play at first contest last year and um, the technical alpha and things like that. They showcased uh, some Easter eggs that they've put into the game. Um, and, you know, they're, they're really cool. Like one example and kind of their one they love to tout the most is um, Amir, who was on the show last year after the, the rare visit, he was there with me um, has been essentially created as a character in the game um when they first started running the technical alpha dem demo he uh they they at one point added damage and like blunderbusses and fall damage but they didn't have the bananas to heal you um as shown in the trailer and so he every time he would take damage to just get back to full health he would just jump off the crow's nest to die so he died like 45 times in this session 
And I mean, like way more than any other player. <laughs> and so Rare like noticed it in their statistics and they looked and saw it was Amir. So they created essentially a tribute in the game to him. So at the bottom of this cliff on one of the islands, there's um, these skeleton legs like sticking up like he had fallen face first into the sand. Um, and his gamer tag is like etched into the rock next to it. So uh, a lot of stuff like that. Behind that, why he was dying so much. It, it was to refill his health because oh, there was no, okay. it was because there was no way to re- regain health. So like rather than going into a battle with half health, every time he would like, you know, get shot by a skelly or, or whatever, he would just kill himself to re- regain health. So <laughs> kind of funny. Um, there's several other ones. One is uh, a guy that posts a lot in the forums, very long, heartfelt stories. Uh, Gamer tags, Clumsy George. They actually named a tavern after him called the Georgian Kraken. So um, lots of pretty cool stuff. And they said they're just going to keep adding stuff like that uh, throughout development and, and beyond development to kind of, um, you know, make make the characters of the game be the players. Um, and they specifically said like once the game is live and there's like maybe some huge, really viral video or really major Twitch streamer or something does something amazing that that will, they'll figure out how to immortalize that in the game. <laughs> so if there's like an epic battle and someone, you know, beats the Kraken with just like one health left while shooting themselves out of a cannon and, and blunder busting it in midair, some crazy feat. Um, they'll, they'll try and commemorate it. So um, that was a m- big deal. Uh, and then the other big reveal, and I, I don't know if it's big, but it was a leak and they deemed it a leak as, as it was said, um, Mike Chapman reviewed that there will be, or revealed that there will be player titles within the game. So, um, not totally sure how that will work if you choose your own or if the game assigns it based on the, the tasks you do. Um, but you know, like if you're, if you kill a lot of players, you will kind of get that reputation as, the fearsome Davy Jones, or if you, uh, if you explore a lot and you discover every single Island, you know, maybe you'll, you'll get, you know, the Explorer. So, uh, cool info from there. And then that was pretty much it. They answered some some fan questions and then, uh, that's all I can really recall from the week. So long winded, but that was, that was a little bit about rarity three. Good job, Jeff. Your mind is a steel trap. Some of that stuff sounds amazing. I want to beat the Kraken now. On, on yeah. the like come on guys I'm gonna do this <laughs> <laughs> um oh one other tidbit Joni yeah. sort of revealed in an IGN interview that they uh still haven't really begun work on the Kraken battle or if they have uh he, he implied that they haven't quite figured out the best way to implement it so Aww. that might be why we didn't see it in the trailer <laughs> got okay. to see a T-Rex in Mario why can't we see a Kraken and see if these that's all I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> They gotta save the best for last. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great once they finish it. Right. Okay, then. Should we uh, move on to the main topic? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, we're here today to interview Kirsty. We're gonna put her under the spotlight and ask her every possible question we can think of. Um, no, so why, why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about you, your background, your gaming history? Um, well, I've been playing games since I was two years old. They they started me as Tails on Sonic the Hedgehog. Hence the I've got mm-hmm, I've got nice. a tattoo on my wrist that's Tails because I was like I need to keep that somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've played a lot of PC games, a lot of co- uh, old console games like uh, Mega Drive and sixty four GameCube and like basically all of that generation onwards um ps1 i haven't gone to ps4 or xbox one though i refuse at the moment i do want the switch the switch looks good i just want more games for it at the moment um i guess my background i kind of just had lots of animals and played games all the time that's that's pretty much it um (laughs) made a lot of blue tech yeah, I can't complain really. Um, it's given me a lot of experience in it. We've set up gaming arcades before. Um, used to do a gaming event that was competitions. For example, you know the Sonic versus modes and Street Fighter. We did a dance mat one once. That was hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> like forty year olds trying to play dance mat is is the greatest <laughs> thing in the world. Yes. Uh, do Twitch streaming now. Uh, 
stream my clay and stuff. Clay's been going for about three years, which is quite fun. And that's about it, really. There's a lot more, obviously, but it's hard to... If anyone uh, wants to check you out on Twitch, what's your handle there? Uh, it's T34POT. Not right. It's T-pop, but in kind of leap. Semi-leap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Okay. So I suppose going a little bit deeper into that, a bit more specific, um, do you have a favourite game, franchise, console, and developer? Um, favourite game's too complicated, as you know. There's, there's, there's too many. You're looking mm -hmm. at at least five from each genre, if not more. And every time I write a list, which tends to be 100 long, I, I figure out more <laughs> as it goes along. Um, <laughs> too many things like dungeon keeper or black and white civilization total wars um jesus sonic the hedgehogs obviously uh the the lord of the rings for the snes was amazing that i could never I get never across that. yeah it would it was just really random um but i was really young at the time and there was a black knight guy i remember a black knight guy stood on a bridge and I could never get past him. And one time I just liked it. I made it past him and it was the greatest achievement of my nice. childhood right there. <laughs> uh, nice. Obviously got Conker and Banjo and... Um, mm. God. Uh, I enjoyed... There was a game. Let me just see if I can find the name. It was called Oxen Free, which is a newer kind of indie game that was a lot mm, of fun. I've heard of it. it yeah. I've heard really, of it. I haven't played it. But... really strange you don't expect it to go where it goes trust me like I, interesting i played it from start to finish i couldn't put it down i was like i need to know where this is going can't can't leave it mm, i need to check that out um yeah there's 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 loads of them again roller coaster tycoon oh the list, mm. the list just keeps going um <laughs> <laughs> okay so what about what about a favorite franchise then um Again, there's there's quite Could a you few. Pick one of those? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it <laughs> comes under the same. Yeah, all of them, apart from EA. EA can go fuck themselves. <laughs> God damn EA. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Sonic the Hedgehogs up until the newer kind of ones. Apart from, is it Sonic Mania that's due to come out? Yeah, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. That looks amazing. That looks really good. I am excited for that one. Um, but the like Sonic Werewolf one was awful. Really, I see that's one of my favorite games of the last generation. Yeah, I Kev think loves that beautiful. game so much. I, think, I may have to revisit it, but yeah, like the Werehog stages were a little bit clunky, but overall, like the story and the visuals and the music, I thought, yeah, maybe give it another chance because I didn't like it when it first came out, and then I went back to it like five years ago, and I just fell in love with it. Definitely, I'll have and to I want you to from. make a clay werehog. That's, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can do that. That'd be pretty cool. Um, um, yeah, I know what you mean. Though Sonic, it's one of those franchises where it started perfect, and like now, they're so hit and miss that it just, it's kind of sad that it was like in the early days on the Mega Drive, every game was ten out of ten, and now it's like you know, even if they're all right, it's like well, all right, it's not good enough, you know. Yeah. But Sonic Mania looks really, really good, though. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm planning on pre-ordering it. I think it does look outstanding. Yeah. It's like revisiting the past, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's... in the right way, I think. It's yeah. not too overly nostalgic. It's got like a mix of old and new from yes, the looks definitely. of it. So, um, okay, all right. So what about a favourite console? Would that be easier to... I mean, I know you're big on PC these days, but Ugh. if you had to pick a single console from history... Just just say PC is forced, not a choice. I always still use my controllers and get told <laughs> off for it a lot. Always got an Xbox oh, controller in. It's like, is it controller compatible? No, not bothered. <laughs> God, please, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um, yeah. you did, the PC Master Race do not like that. I'm just, yeah. No, they do not. They're um, using <laughs> inferior controls. Yeah. How dare you use a controller? I'll use a controller all I want and still kick your ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd save Mega Drive, obviously, because it was the console I started on. Um, like I, I can't ever get rid of that. But the SNES, the PS1, and surprisingly, the 360 and the original Xbox, I'd say, were the top ones for me. 
Um, the Xbox. Yeah, no, they're great. Yeah. The Xbox original because you could play music while you played your games. That was amazing. It's like, <laughs> it's just outstanding. It's like, oh yeah, God, that was that was the first console that, that was so that, revolutionary. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was amazing. And like, it, it took the Xbox One like two years to get that feature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it's there now. Yeah. yeah. And I am really excited. You know, this week I, I don't know if you know this, Kirsty, because you don't sort of keep up with xbox you said yeah you haven't got an xbox one but did you know at e3 they announced uh original xbox games are coming to xbox one you'll be able to play them now that's good they yeah. needed a backwards compatibility feature yeah because mm-hmm. they, they, you can already do 360 but now they're doing it original xbox as well so yep. you get an xbox one you can play literally anything xbox from now on ah, well awesome they still have to work out copyright issues within with licensing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe not but, every yeah. single one, but still a lot more. But than... All three generations. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, but but the original discs will work, which is sort of very unusual. It's not just buying a digital download. Like if you have like a stack of old Xbox One games, you have an Xbox One. Any one of them that they've sort of worked the licensing out for and added to the backwards compatibility, you can just pop the disc in and play it. It's going to be pretty cool. Does that yep. mean I can play the Guilty Gear game I've got? Yeah, as long as they work out the licensing. They only mentioned two games so far, but I'm sure there'll be a bunch more at launch, and that was uh, Fusion Frenzy and Crimson Skies as being the first two. Yeah, because what what they did with 360, um, when that first, the 360 back compat on the Xbox One, that launched with, I think, was there like 50 or 60 games compatible, and now it's like 400? I was going to say, it launched with 100, and I think they just hit 300. Okay, all right. But I mean, it's still a, that's still a fair amount. Yeah, they usually start with like the stuff that Microsoft owns, like their first party games, so they don't, you know, they don't really have to work out copyright stuff. And then they work right. out deals with everyone else and add more every month from there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I sort of got off track there, but <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good Favorite console tonight. then, if, if you have usual to pick, the show. gun to your head, desert island situation. Do you think it would be Mega Drive? Mm, I guess so. But okay. I'd still an hour about it. Well, thanks for that comment. <laughs> <answer. laughs> uh, and then lastly, I mean, I suppose this is going to be another one where you can't decide, but do you have a favourite developer? Now, obviously for us, it's Rare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, what about you? Bear in mind, Rare are listening. You're not being judged. <laughs> well, no, seriously, in, in regards to communication and just general friendliness, and like, they, they love, like, Rare would definitely be up there in regards to just talking to they've they've been nothing but friendly towards me since i've communicated with them and sent the piece over um Mm. bungie used to be one used to be since Uh destiny i am not friends with them since destiny i'm very (laughs) upset with them um very very like (laughs) <laughs> we we have issues with that one. Um, I've been obsessed with them, uh, upset with them since Destiny One. So th- they, thank, yes. I'm glad you've uh, jumped on the bandwagon. Honestly, one, what was the starting content of that game? I pre-ordered it. I was hyped about it. It ruined my hype for for life. That was it. Done. Ooh. No more hype for me. Apart from Sea of Thieves, they've brought it back. That looks <laughs> fucking amazing. It's like <laughs> next level. Uh, start. I've shown that trailer to everyone. Yeah. Um, oh, it's so fun. But yeah, Halo one, two, three, four. Four can go crap. Actually, four was rubbish. I meant Reach. Um, <laughs> was was great. Then they brought out uh, three, four, three. Brought out four, and I was like, ah, okay, we're going to Call of Duty. I'll leave this series here. Done. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, Destiny, like a multiplayer explorer game that's meant to last ten years with an expanding star. When when's <laughs> Destiny two coming out? Sorry. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. Bungie up until that point, great. Um, but yeah, I'd say Rare and Bungie are definitely the hype ones, and Blizzard in some regards because World of Warcraft is good. Yeah, I remember um, talking about Destiny back in uh, 2014 when it released. Um, I booked a trip to New York, and Destiny was coming out like the day I was leaving. And I remember my mate saying to me, oh, man, you are going to miss out. He's like, you should cancel your trip. I was like, what? I spent like, you know, 500 quid so far. You know, I can't get that back. (laughs) And he's like, well, you're going to miss the launch week for what's going to be the defining game of this generation. And I was like, I'll take the risk, mate. And yeah, (laughs) I don't regret it. And the rest was history. Yeah. 
think so, with yeah. I don't think anyone would choose Destiny over New York at this point. No. <laughs> no. There's still some hardcore fans, but... Oh my god, yeah, no. They come up to me, it's like, it's amazing. No, it's not. Sorry. No. No. <laughs> no. no. I think what I've said about Destiny since the beginning is, like, mechanically, there's a lot of the good Bungie stuff in there. There's just no content, and then it gets tiresome doing the same thing over and over again for yes. better and better gear. Like, that's not what Halo was about or Bungie was about in the past. Exactly. Exactly mm. my point. Like, it just, it just felt so bland all the time. It's like, ah, oh, look, you got a new weapon. It's this color. Great. Let's let's go and kill the next thing, where Peter Dinklage stands there and goes, "I'm really sorry that I have to do this voice acting, all the way through it." <laughs> well, they patched Peter Dinklage out and replaced it with Nolan really? North later on. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> well, he clearly didn't care through the whole recording settings. <laughs> I'm not surprised with the bloody script he was given. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> so. Again, we kind of got away from ourselves. So, <laughs> gun to your head, Desert Island, you have to live with one developer. Who's it going to be? Rare? Um, yeah, Rare, because of how they've, they've just been since talking to them. They've been marvellous. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. great guys. Yeah. Um, so, Jeff, take, take I was just going to continue on, uh, segueing from that. We just were going to ask next what your favourite Rare game is, or if this is another one where you couldn't choose. It, it's got to be Conquer for me, just for there what it go. brought. Yeah, it, it absolutely. Was, it was so controversial for its time, and as I'm still surprised certain people haven't heard of it. I keep going, you know, Conquer's Bad Fur, and like, what? How have you not seen this game? It, yeah. It's got everything. <laughs> you could ever want. Like, <laughs> I think it's more high profile in recent years because PewDiePie did that big thing on it. Right. Yeah. Uh, that brought a lot of eyes to it, which yeah. which is good, honestly. I mean, say what you will about PewDiePie and whatever, but like. It, it always annoys me when I watch that video that he's YouTube. playing like the incorrectly immolated version on a crappy PC emulator. Yeah, well, you know, you gotta take what you can take. Exposure is <laughs> worth it. Um, so, did you play it back kind of when it came out when you were younger, or or did you kind of come across it later? Um, I was a I was a little bit older from when it got released, but it was I was young enough that I probably shouldn't have been playing it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did same you play same. The, the original from N64 one or the the Xbox. Uh, N64 one. Okay. Nice. Gotta cool. gotta go to its roots. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just I'm kind of lost for words because you actually gave us a concrete answer without you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can answer that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love Conquer. It's my, my personal favourite is probably Donkey Kong Country 2, but Conquer's yeah. way up there. It's definitely in my, my top five rare games, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Jeff, Dave, what, what are your favourite rare games now? It's been a couple of years since I've asked you that question. I love my, them I mean, all. Okay. Like Mine is Banjo-Kazooie. I mean, it just it um, means too much to me, even if it's not maybe the most mechanically best one ever, but it just... The sum of I, all parts. Right. I feel like I'm torn between Perfect Dark, Banjo Kazooie, and Donkey Kong Country One. It's really hard to pick. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good tie. Yeah. Yeah, they're all great games. I mean, yeah, this is like picking your favorite slice of pizza. It's like, just give them, <laughs> give them all to me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. I'm just sitting here trying to count the pepperonis in each one to see which, to figure out which one's oh, superior. Oh no! Don't kill it with meat. No. No. Anyway, <laughs> how about pineapple? Oh. oh, okay, possibly, but yeah, meat on pizza. Yeah. No, no, pineapple doesn't go on pizza. Pineapple pizza is an abomination. Ham and pineapple. You know it. Oh, no. no, not allowed. <laughs> no. I don't like it, but that's like one of the most popular pizzas. They people have issues. Okay, have you not seen the state of the world at the moment? Right, that's like that's all the meme world is about right now. Is no pineapple on pizza. Yep, that's Kirsty. Yes. Gun to your head, desert island, you're only allowed one kind of pizza. <laughs> What's it going to be? Um, farmhouse. Okay, not too bad. I tend to stick with the same food. I, I know what I like with food. That, that one's okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, moving on from purely gaming, I suppose, uh, the next thing we wanted to ask was, uh, when did you first become interested in clay sculpting? Like, What's your history there? Um... I, I think a lot of it came from playing with blue tack in school a lot. I used to just make things with blue tack all the time in class. Um, 
I don't, nice. yeah, not paying attention to the class at all, just doing clip. It, see, they, they told me off of playing with Blue Tech. Look where it's got me now. Take that, oh. world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I made a cake out of icing for my little brother. Mum just bought some, was like, made some stuff. We made a little Superman, Spider-Man and Batman out yeah. of the icing. And she bought me some Fimo clay and just went try and use that. And it kind of escalated from there. I started making little gaming pieces like the wonky poker ball that's absolutely dreadful. Um, <laughs> and then some people wanted some League of Legends models making. And I just started doing fan art to start with. Uh, stuff that resonated with me when I was younger. Like Worms and all those kind of games. Uh, and then it, yeah, it just kind of got to where it is now, which is absolutely mental. And and when when was this when you started making these original figures? Like was um, this recently or a few years ago? I'd say it was about three years ago now where it started. Okay, okay. So this was back when you were hyped for Destiny. Yeah. Back in the <laughs> <laughs> the dark days of before times. <laughs> before times. <laughs> so like, uh, it's gonna sound like a really, really, really stupid question, but like, how how do you? do it like no because i mean i know obviously how you sculpt clay but your detail is like so fine yeah it's unbelievable um i i'm not overly sure myself sometimes um <laughs> do you cheat and use a 3d printer you can tell us no nothing <laughs> okay. all, all by hand mostly um, I've, I've seen i've seen the live stream she does it for real yeah um it it's crazy i i don't know where it actually came from but it, it's been a progressive thing like grass is now starting to look like grass instead of going in one direction like, you look mm. at my original <laughs> pieces they're, they're not as detailed i think it's mostly time that's caused it but um yeah it's all 100 percent clay work uh I, for hair i roll it out really thin into tiny strips and cut loads of strips up and add it all and do it that way or with bases just flatten it out and use a little tool to scratch lines in same with fur um, eyes and stuff are a bit more complicated because uh, you've got to add loads of different colours to it and add your little dots of white in the right places because if you get that wrong it looks like the good boss eyed um, <laughs> but yeah it's uh, it's just mostly with the lazy Susan spin a lazy Susan round and hmm. do it that way kind of basic equipment at the moment yeah have have you gone or taken any classes about it kind of since you've gotten into it or just kind of youtube videos or just really just self-taught just do it yourself type of thing uh 100 self-taught uh i've oh, never amazing. never looked at youtube videos i probably should to be fair it might help <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're overrated never yeah, done so classes. fine without it so yeah it, it just kind of trial and error mostly yeah because awesome. when um I mean, I've got to be honest, back at the Retro Revival event, when Chris Marlow mentioned, in, I think it was Chris, or it was either Chris or Kev mentioned on stage, uh, I'll check out this clay figure stand. And I was sort of thinking like, oh yeah, here we go. It's going to be some <laughs> kid making some rubbish little figures. But yeah, no, I, I was like, <laughs> whoa. And it was, it was such a nice break from like, you know, you had like what, 15 or 16 stands there and they're yeah. all the same thing. And then you had yours, which was just like, I don't know, it just blew me away, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you kindly. That's all right. Don't yeah, just, I mean, just from seeing pictures of the event and, and Kev's account of it, like, it it was amazing and, and refreshing to see kind of just that passionate fan art there, like that, like the 3D, you know, you can touch it, you can see it from all angles. It's not just, you know, like you said, yeah. not just like all the other ones. It was amazing. You can throw them down the stairs and they live as well, which is quite surprising. I might try that after my battle total. <laughs> no way I'll try that. <laughs> yeah, I, we forgot to mention that at the top of the show. Thank you so much for the uh, the figures that you gifted yeah. to us. Uh, Jeff, what was it you got? Uh, a little Banjo-Kazooie, a little teddy bear Banjo-Kazooie sculpture. Oh. <laughs> That's not nice. a problem at all. It's and, and what was yours, Kev, as to remind everyone? <laughs> Mine was the uh, the Battletoads. Uh, it was from the the NES game, Level 7. I can't remember the name, but it's the one with the snakes. Yeah, I don't remember either. Yeah, yeah the snake. The snake. That was the, amazing. And it's got Rash stood on a snake looking at the wall, and it's like the detail is just brilliant. Like, so cool. You actually added like the 
the, the wall crack where the snakes come through, and it's just oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, Love it's it. good stuff. I've seen I think I owe Dave one actually. I can't leave him out. Pardon? Yeah, Dave, tell her what you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Shoot, you put me right on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you have time. Um, I we'll would come back. say, um, you have you Destiny. done any of uh, Yukon Lele yet? Yes, I have. I sent a piece over. Platonic have a ukulele. Uh, yeah, and that one's amazing looking. Yeah, but it'd be cool to have something from that. Yeah, we can do that. I'll, I'll have to make you something different though. I like every piece to be individual. So. Oh yeah, no, no, of nice. course. Yeah, don't, don't. Make makes the value, you know, more. I think you know if there's only one of them. <laughs> you could just get some purple and green, roll it into a ball, and say it's the uh, reptile roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would say don't even worry about being the characters. Just pick something awesome you like from that game. <laughs> do it. Okay, man. I'll have a look. I'll see what I can get inspiration-wise from it. Awesome. Thank You're you too so kind. much. You're welcome. Yeah, and if anyone else listening at home wants to take advantage of her, just send her a sub story and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't, no, don't we need to that. plug her Kickstarter. She's got a Kickstarter going right now. Yes, uh, you do. Maybe we should close. talk about that now as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll just jump to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I started a Kickstarter. How many days are left? 15 days left. And I had 27. I can't do maths right now. So 12 days ago. <laughs> um, I did it kind of as a, yeah, let's just do it for a laugh kind of thing. Not a laugh, but, you know, just in a sense of I didn't really expect it to go anywhere. Um, mm, yeah. I, I've wanted to set it up as a business for a while, but I'm just using the equipment I've got. I've kind of just built up buying three pound right. clay tools as I go and stuff like that. Um, but I've got 69% uh, at the moment with 15 awesome. days left to go, which is absolutely outstanding. And I've never been so humbled by anything in my entire life. Um, the rare guys have done all they can to basically share it out for me and make sure people are looking at it. Same with some other kind of, like one of my favorite YouTubers has shared it out. Um, nice. Friends have been supporting it and have been getting shout outs from friends on the streams and stuff like that, which has also been really nice. Um, but yeah, it's got like a little bit of an origin story on there. There's, if you support it, there's ways to get gifts um so you can have commissioned items made for you which can be anything it doesn't have to just be game characters however much i like making them um mm -hmm. it, it can be a cat <laughs> if you've got a cat <laughs> um but yeah it's 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 going really really well it's incredibly short i'm very nervous and excited still uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop the nerves with it because all of a sudden if it does go through i've now got to make it into a proper business instead of a hobby yeah. Um, which is a big step, but yeah. That's great. Um, what's the easiest way for them to find the link to that? What did, should they just search Kickstarter for uh, like, Tibber's Workshop? or It's Tibber's Workshop and Teapot Games because it's for Teapot the stream games, as okay. well. Um, okay. But I can give you guys a link. I think if you search it or it's on any of my networking, it's on my, it's all over my Twitter, my Facebook, my uh, Twitch. Okay. It's like everywhere. Well, we'll link to your links on in our youtube version as far as people on itunes just uh, go search for tibber's workshop or uh teapot games brilliant thank you <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah uh so kind of moving along from there kind of back to the the clay sculpting itself what uh, what's one of the biggest projects that you've ever undertaken uh, and kind of how how challenging was it it, it i haven't there's, there's a big one coming up that I'll express after, but I think my biggest okay. models that I've ever done um, were the League of Legends ones. Mm, okay. And they're really quite difficult. Like I, The retro ones are, are a lot easier because there's less detail that goes into them. Um, the League of Legends models, I use the 3D modeling page that they've got and mm, try and mm -hmm. get every single detail of the model into it. Uh, they can take me up to seven days to make those ones. Oh, wow. Um, they, they're still quite little, but just the amount of layers and you, you have to do each section one at a time. So you've got to do the legs and then the torso, then the head and arms. Because if you are putting that much level of detail in, it, it'll mush down and squish yeah. itself. Or you touch things you don't want to touch and it messes it up. Um, 
they can be really complex. Uh, so I think that, and they've got big weapons as well. Like their weaponry is ridiculous. Great fun to make though. Um, but yeah, I think they're my biggest ones. The biggest one due to come up is I'm making. Have you guys ever seen Firefly? Yeah. Oh, I love Firefly. Mm, I've heard of it. Yeah, I haven't watched it. <gasps> you need to watch. I used it. to I be obsessed. I know. <laughs> Jeff, it's only twelve episodes. You got no excuse. Okay, I can. I can. Twelve really episodes that one. and the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to watch them, definitely. If you're uh, really hardcore, okay. there's graphic novels continuing it after that. Don't put it <laughs> off. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got to make the, the ship and the crew. What, well, are you actually going to make the crew? So, yes. Ooh, realistic human clay. Yes, so I'm making the, the crew and the big ship, so the ship's probably going to be shoebox-sized. Wow, um, holy cow. So that's all going to be streamed live, uh, but I've been kind of putting it off and going just because it's a friend who's who wants it. I'm just like, hold on, let me let me practice with other things first because this <laughs> this one's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> let, let me get used to, to vehicles and and kind of uh, tasks like that. that so should... if if someone actually had a specific request that they wanted made i mean do you do you take requests or do you have to be careful at the moment not to take on too much or um i take requests but there's currently <clears throat> a wait-in list um okay. the wait-in's about two three months but depending on what the item is and like i make exceptions for if it's a gift so for example someone's birthday's coming up and it's not a huge task i'll add an extra couple of hours to my day to make that in time for for gift kind of items and stuff like that okay that's really interesting that's that's uh that's a good work ethic as well you know to put the obviously gifts and birthdays like there's more of a time crunch on that yes. so it's good that you, you know you try not to let anyone down and no because i was just like in my head i just suddenly had an idea of something that i would love to have but yeah. that would probably take you a while what 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 you got in mind? Uh, have now. you ever seen Twin Peaks? No, but I okay. Can't. So you don't okay. So you don't know what the red room is. Twin Peaks, red room. <laughs> I hear now. googling. <laughs> now I do. Yes. Hang on, let me see. So yeah, the you, iconic you want the, image. You want the little dwarf dude in well, play, look, I, don't I you? Want, I want the iconic <laughs> image of Dale Cooper sat in the red room with the dwarf, and I. <laughs> that so would be a very long and expensive project, but yeah. <laughs> if you can get that to me by 2020, I'll yeah, pay sure. anything. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, well, thanks for taking my request. Um, <laughs> so I, sp I suppose that links me into my uh, my next question. Um, so what are your long-term goals with Tibber's Workshop? Is it just to keep doing what you're doing? I mean, do you ever hope to maybe open your own, like, physical shop? Or, I mean, what, what's the plan? Um, I want to have a room in my house of which I can dedicate to streaming and doing my clay work because they kind of intertwine with themselves quite a lot um but i mostly want to get to a stage where i'm good enough to make teapots i really want to make geeky teapots Ooh. so badly um and also i'd love to do massive scenes so for example world of warcraft cities or mm -hmm. big buildings from world of warcraft yeah. that are really iconic um and like lord of the rings tributes those kind of things um, but I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I'd love to continue doing miniatures. Um, I just kind of want to make things for people. I like hitting the nostalgia. I like I like the giddiness people get. It's it's really kind of heartwarming watching people. I just got this cool image of the Battle of Minas Tirith, the Lord of the Rings, done all in K. Yeah, right. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. As soon as you said Lord of the Rings, that's what popped in my mind. <laughs> get there one day. Maybe when I'm six day. There you go. <laughs> Can be your magnum opus. Mm -hmm. Oh, kitten. Sorry, there's a kitten here trying to knock my phone off the table. Aww. <laughs> it's alright. Cats go over well in all forms on the internet. I've got two of them, and they love getting involved. 
That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, if you could, I know we've sort of already touched on this a little bit, but uh, if you could talk to us about your participation at gaming events. I mean, obviously you did the Retro Revival yeah. event. Um, have you done many others in the past? And are, are there any coming up in the pipeline? Uh, no, not at the moment. Um, the only place I've gone is Revival so far. Um, mostly because I, I ended up trading my first table for a model. So I made a model for Craig and um, his his missus. I forget her name right now, I'm really sorry. Um, but I made a model of them two and traded it for my first table because I've, I've never been overly wealthy as a person. Um, and went to that event and they, they treated me really nice. They were lovely. I'm quite anxious in groups. So big events are, are quite an ordeal. I have to work myself up for them. Uh, but they were they were absolutely lovely. And from that point, I've just constantly gone to their events. They've done nothing but help promote and get me out there and have been really supportive of what I do. Um, a lot of my Kickstarter, I've got to thank for them and being able to meet the rare guys. And having I had a... Because of those guys, a piece of my work went to John Romero, which was amazing as well. Oh, wow. um, they've just been phenomenal people. But I would like to get into more. Uh, the Kickstarter does get to its goal. Um, some of that funding is going to go on tables to get to new events. So any suggestions are always welcome if anyone's got anything for me. Because, um, yeah, I need, to get, I need to get out there and start doing more. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll keep our, we, you know, we usually keep our ear to the ground for any events, you know, just in case there's any yeah. connection to, to Rare or like, you know, N64 stuff from our side. So okay. if, if we hear about anything, you know, we'll, we'll let you know in good time. And yeah, I, yeah, I think totally. I think it's definitely yeah. a good scene to get. I mean, well, look, just go into that Revival Retro, you hooked up with Rare, you know, yeah. uh, we, we <laughs> met each other, so we were able to cross promote. It's all, it's all good stuff. Yeah, it's brilliant. The atmospheres are outstanding as well. Like, it's really nice to talk to people with the same kind of interests. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Jeff, Dave, I've kind of hogged a lot of the airtime this episode. Have either of you got any questions that you wanted to ask that we haven't covered? Yeah, Dave, go ahead. <laughs> I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like the two of us have kind of covered the bulk of it. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. It's just kind of awkward in my sit in my where I'm sitting. So I was kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Dave was having some issues prior to today, and he is in a mobile studio, as we like to call it here in the logcast. Right. AKA right, right. his car. So. It's called. It's called. <laughs> I'm sitting in a car right now with no air conditioning, and it's really hot. Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's fine. So I got it working. But yeah, that, that if I sound a little bit out of it today, it might be because I'm slipping into a heat coma. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um i guess you you ended up meeting uh chris uh siever and sean Pyle while you were there right do you have any chris Marlo. cool walk through of that <laughs> um they came over I, I got a hug i don't do hugs i got a hug though that was great um <laughs> he said he signed my book he talked at me and i freaked out and then for like the next six hours i was still freaking out about the fact that I met him. Uh, <laughs> yep, I, I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally, as soon as I, as soon as I left, I think I ran to the hotel for a whiskey. I was like, I can't take this, give me whiskey now. I don't know how to deal. Um, calm the nerves, calm the yeah, nerves. <laughs> strong alcohol, it always helps. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were just absolutely charming. Uh, talked to me about my work. I got to send over uh, the big, big Conkronis thrown to them directly. And since then, they've just been chatting to me. Uh, they've been... So awesome. I've occasionally got messages from them. We, we're talking to Chris Marlowe about getting him in on a D&D &D session one time as a as a guest. Oh, is, that would be oh, awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be great fun. Um, yeah, I, and I just realized I called uh, Chris Marlowe Chris Seaver. <laughs> is that heat coming? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, they're not the same person, even though they both worked on Conquer. Yeah, to be fair, there was like a ton of Chris's that were at Rare at that time and on Conquer right. specifically. Yep. I know, it's like Chris is like the name to have for making uh, cool video games, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, must be it. That's why I'm not at 
in the games industry. Yeah, Damn. I'm sorry, Jeff. There's there's no Jeff <sighs> in video games. Maybe you could Dave, be the first. David, you you need to meet Chris Marlowe though, because be- me, Jeff, yeah, that's and true. Kirsty have this like <laughs> shared affinity for the nervousness of meeting Chris Marlowe. It's just yeah, we need to make that happen. <laughs> Maybe we can like, talk I mean, to him. I don't know how, but. <laughs> I guess I could just well, go to the UK and stalk them relentlessly. Well, you meant <laughs> there you, well, go. you still meant to be doing that group trip to the UK next year, which is going to happen. Don't, don't try and <laughs> totally going to happen. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go time it with the retro revival event, and we'll we'll tell Chris, even if he's not appearing on a panel, we'll say, "Look, mate, come on, just come down." Would meet you? Dave. He needs to understand how serious. Dave. We need we need to get Dave to go take whiskey shots. So come meet him. <laughs> okay. Go about it. <laughs> But yeah, like like I mentioned a few weeks ago on the uh, you know the episode about that event when I when I met Chris, like I just walked out of the lunch line, went up to him, and I was like, "Hi." <laughs> Did your voice crack just like that? Too? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good. Not like the first. To me, it's like oh, the equivalent of meeting like a rock star, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we we met him as a to group. Me, Chris. We met him as a group at Rare, and we were in one of the bars, and we just, like, we're walking through, and we didn't know who was going to be sitting where, like, obviously, so, like, we're just walking in, and then all of a sudden, there he is, like, on the left, and it's like, I don't know about everybody else, but I just kind of, like, stopped, <laughs> I was like, <gasps> <gasps> and then, you know, we started talking to him, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody asked him to sing the, the Mighty Pooh song, and he did, and we just were like, <gasps> it was amazing. He's a great opera singer, that man, as well. Oh, he's, he's incredible. <laughs> Next I'll level. T- tell Kirsty the story about you and Chris in Birmingham in the middle of the night. <laughs> so the last night that we were there for our trip, like we went out to dinner after the second day at the studio, and then we went out um, just kind of pub crawling after that. You were clubbing, and dude. <laughs> sort of. I don't know. We ended up at a kind of club because all the pubs were closed. It was really weird. It was like Tuesday night, and nothing was open in Birmingham. But um, <laughs> so we're like leaving. We'd all had a few drinks, and we're like walking back to the hotel they had put us at the um the Malmaison and uh we're walking under this kind of overpass and I just kind of started singing um I think I just went me 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 uh, <laughs> because it was like really echoey and reverberating and so I just kind of started it and then he just joined right in and the two of us just sang a duet right there <laughs> in the streets oh my God. it was amazing <laughs> my wife recorded it a little bit on her phone I need to see so, this you need to see uh, yeah so I'll I'll send you the link. <laughs> She's got it on YouTube, but um, yeah, it was it was incredible. I'm just was imagining like a once in a lifetime a random member of the public walking past that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like two in the morning because it was after last call. I think well, I don't know if there's last call, but they closed the club we were in. Yeah, Tuesday night, two a.m.s probably kick out in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They don't I, don't, I was gonna say I don't know how it is over there. <laughs> it's the city that occasionally sleeps. <laughs> just occasionally yeah it was i was surprised like it was pretty dead but it was tuesday night and it's not new york city so totally it makes sense totally guys like <laughs> yeah yeah new york is just crazy man a, uh, a, a sunday night or monday night in new york was like a saturday night here any night Those yeah guys any just night of the never week stop. <laughs> wow. no it's like street vendors on the street at like three in the morning like yeah. selling you Dude, fake dvds one night i couldn't sleep i was watching a dodgy torrent of eastenders because i'm a saddo and I was like, right, I'm hungry. And I just walked out my apartment where I was staying. And there was a guy selling kebabs at like 4 a.m. And I was like, all yep. right, all right, mate. <laughs> have a kebab. <laughs> yep. Best thing about New York. We usually sleep by that point. <sighs> Not me. I'm a night owl. Yeah. Well, this, <laughs> the city itself. Like, you, you don't really get night nightlife. Oh. Start playing games is a different matter. Yeah, right, no, no. Like, even London? I mean, I remember one night I was stuck in London. Sorry, this is a massive tangent, but I, was, <laughs> I went down for a gaming event in London, and um, me and my mates had booked into this cheap Airbnb, and we got there, and it looked really dodgy, and the guys were like kept asking if they could look after our equipment, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> so we ditched that place, we went out, and we just stayed up in London all night, and and there was just nothing going on. Like the coffee shops were closed, the bars. Were... We ended up sat in McDonald's for like four hours. Oh, <laughs> oh no! So... That's awesome. That's a bummer. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. Um... <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Jeff, you got any uh, sort of closing questions or or? Um, none that I can think of. None that we listed out. Um, 
I, I, I just can't like praise the work enough, like just the <laughs> attention to detail and, and, um, I, I just really want everybody listening to this to go check it out and maybe see if there's something or, or come up with something to request or, you know, whatever, but it just, uh, no, it's, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, I appreciate being here, trust me. A L- little bit awkward, but I'm I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you did better than Dave. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty weird too, so you know, no worries. Did you meet the elders of the internet, Dave? That's what I want to know. I, I did, and they mm. banished me. <laughs> they told me I was unworthy and that I could have no internet. Is that why you mm. sat outside Walmart? That's why he's in a car in a Walmart, <laughs> yes. Walmart parking lot. <laughs> yeah, hot spotting off my iPhone to two separate laptops, holding my microphone that I took off my boom stand and just kind of holding it here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if someone like, like drove by and like, looked in my car, they'd be very confused as to what I was doing. I'm surprised they, you they think you're wiretapping Walmart. Arrested, to be honest. Yeah. Me too. Or like, <laughs> the battery dying or something. Right. Hey, are you it's... are you mooching off of Walmart's Wi-Fi or are you on your own hotspot? Oh, I'm on my I'm on my own my uh, my <laughs> okay. hotspot because <laughs> that's good. Yeah, my problem just said that I don't get cell service at my house, so in order for my cell phone to work, I have to have my Wi-Fi God, to be sucks. working. So when my Wi-Fi goes out, I can't use my phone either. So I couldn't like tell the guys that I was having internet issues. So I tried to fix <laughs> it for like 20 minutes, couldn't, and then just got in my car, oh, loaded up my equipment, geez. and drove to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, well, we appreciate classic the Dave. Anyway, it's, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's my dedication fun. to the podcast, right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. So, um, oh, one last thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, can you explain to us a little bit about your Discord and Twitch communities? Uh, what would you like to know about them? Well, like, I don't know. <laughs> what would you like to tell about them? I mean, uh, oh my god, you, you 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 stream yourself, don't you? But there's like a network of you, isn't there? Like... Yes, there is. Um, mm. There's some brilliant people involved. To be fair, we've got like all sorts of. We've got an ex-military guy. We've got Bishop who wants to be a voice actor that runs D and D. Bishop Killjoy and Smoking Redneck. You'll be able to if you find my Twitch. If you put exclamation mark friends, they're all there. Um, you've got nice. Jordan, who's my other half, who's insanely salty. He's so angry uh, at life. Jordan's <laughs> hilarious. I, I spoke yeah. to him briefly that night when I was when I was on there. Very, very Welsh. Very angry. It's very <laughs> easy to provoke him as well. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> we've got yeah, just they're all they're all good guys. All very strange, but I think that's what makes it all work very well. Um, play a lot of games together. We find that if someone's missing a game, one of us will get it for the other person. Um, and it's always a good place for other people to come as well, especially on Discord. You just want to chat rubbish to people or join in on multiplayer games. There's always someone playing something. Nice. And nice. I believe that's the the lowest tier reward for your Kickstarter, isn't it? To get an invite to yes. your Discord? And I think, oh no, it, you get a key, a key ring or a fridge magnet as well. I think, I think there's still a couple of those up yes, for grabs. Yes, that's true. Sorry, I missed it's that. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone who backs on Kickstarter gets a automatic invite to Discord. Awesome. 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 Okay. Uh, any more for any more, or are we about ready to wrap this up? I, I think we've I think we've covered yeah, it and I think we're good. I want to give her a little bit of her Saturday back. <laughs> it's okay. I've still got hours yet. Say I'm <laughs> night owl. I'll play games later. It's all good. Yeah, well, I apologize to Jordan for us keeping you away. This. <laughs> um, okay. All right then. Well, closing off now. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining us. Um, and I am just pulling up something that you sent me earlier right yeah you sent me like a whole bunch of social stuff so we'll post all of that in the description for this episode so if anyone wants to check it out you're on facebook instagram twitter obviously the kickstarter twitch so you're all over the place so if anyone (laughs) wants to find you there's always a way um thanks everyone for listening at home as always you can check us out on uh rare and friends sorry rarefriends.net got that wrong uh you can <laughs> find us on youtube on twitter at rare and friends uh i don't know it's been a while since i've done this guys help me out <laughs> <laughs> uh we're also on instagram rare and friends and 
well did we get facebook do we get, <laughs> think, do we even get youtube i don't know i wasn't listening <laughs> yeah we have youtube twitter instagram and facebook there you go. You should Rare and follow friends. the you should follow the Twitter and the Instagram, like the Facebook page, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. All the social stuff. Okay. Yeah. And if you're yeah, if you're listening to this on YouTube but you want it on your iPod or iPhone or whatever <laughs> your kids use these days. Jeez. <laughs> wow, that made me look old. Okay. Um <laughs> if you want to take it with you. <laughs> Google Play, iTunes, and uh, probably most other reputable podcast apps yeah. from the interwebs. Oh, I'm Dave. <laughs> we are also on Google Play as well as iTunes. I always forget to mention that. Didn't I just say that? Did yeah, I not just say that? Jeff just said <laughs> that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I missed blame, that. Blame the Walmart reception. <laughs> yeah, okay. he, he, we dropped. Okay. So. Right. Follow us. That was the. This was an awful ending. This is so smooth. Let's just go. Let's just go. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye, this everyone. is what professional podcasting is like, right here. Dave, don't die on your drive home. Right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>